All right, let's quick review. There are four ways to alter the rate of a reaction. First of all, temperature, which we watched at least one video about. A catalyst, we had a number of examples. Surface area, or the nature of the reactant. And now, concentration. This one is the biggest focus and has many videos in a row, and it has lots of math associated with it. So buckle up, here we go with concentration and the rate of a reaction. So. Concentration and rate, section 14.3 in your textbook. The initial instantaneous rate is dependent upon the initial concentrations of the reactants. We express this in an equation, and the equation has a special name and is unique to each reaction at a particular temperature. I'll give you a second to write that down because those factors make a big difference for each reaction that you come across. Take, for example, this reaction. A plus B goes to AB. The little a, the little b, and the little c would be coefficients that might or might not be used in a particular reaction, depending on what's needed to balance it. So the rate law equation takes this special form. The fancy name for the special name for the uh, equation that tells you how fast a reaction is going to go is called the rate law equation. And the rate law equation always takes this form. The word rate, R-A-T-E, you have to write the word, equals sign, a small letter K, it has to be a lowercase letter K, the brackets around the first element or substance that is in the equation raised to a particular power. Notice it's in brackets, and that means concentration of. The brackets around the second reactant. If there was a third, you'd put brackets around that as well. And then you'd raise that to a particular exponent as well. And these exponents can only be experimentally determined. Let's go through in great detail what each one of these pieces means inside of a rate law equation, or sometimes they'll call it a rate law expression, just to make it sound fancier. So you can write it right on this one. I recopied it on this page because it just went to another page. But first, the word rate. So rate is measured in concentration per unit time. For example, molarity per second. As we've talked about before, it could be molarity times seconds to the negative one. It could be moles times liters to the negative one times seconds to the negative one. All right? This is the speed of the reaction. This tells you how fast the reaction will go. The A and the B, these brackets around here, mean concentrations. They're measured in molarity, and that's its units. It's capital M, or mole per liter. So keep your units straight, that these are molarity per unit time over here, and these are capital M's or molarities. The little oh, exponents have a special name. The M and the N have a special name, and we'll talk about those in just a second. Okay, The exponents right there. The little k, the small letter k, is called the rate constant. And it has a numerical value with units, and it's unique to that reaction at a particular temperature. It has units, and you should always find out what those units are. Remember, it's unique to this particular reaction. K is always going to be different depending on what the reaction is. And it's going to have units, and the units will be unique to that reaction too, depending on what the exponents are right here. All right, lastly, the exponents. The exponents have a special name. I'm going to zoom this a little bit over here, and then I'm going to just slide this up and know that we're talking about M and N. Got this all written down? Okay. Here's what it looks like in the textbook, too. Here is the rate law. That's what they call this, the rate law or the rate expression. Okay. Notice it has a little M and an N up above it. And then they give some examples of that in a second. The exponents are called orders. That's the fancy name for the exponent. When they say it's to the first order, second order, third order, that means it's raised to that power. And they can only be solved for experimentally via the data from an experiment. Typically, these numbers are 0, 1, and 2. 
typically. Most, most, most experiments end up being 0, 1, or 2 for the exponents. But rarely they're things like negative 1, 1 half, 3. They could be other strange things as well, but you don't see those nearly as often. You can also calculate the overall order of a reaction, and that equals the sum of all the exponents. You can see right here that they give another example of it to the m and to the n. And then here's an example of a rate expression with some real chemicals in it. And notice there's no numbers up above there, so it would be first order or first power for NH4 and first power for NO2 minus. I'm going to slide this out of the way, slide this paper over in case you're not quite done writing all that down. And then we're going to do one example like this. Got that to fit. Yep. Here's an example problem of NO plus H2 goes to N2 plus H2O. Notice there's a 2 here, 2 here, and a 2 here to balance it. It has an experimentally determined rate law of rate equals K NO2 to the second power, H2 to the first power. Remember, if nothing is written there, it's assumed that there's a 1. What is the order of NO? So what is the exponent for NO? Well, you would say 2, because there's a little 2 right up here. So when they ask you the order of NO, it's always the exponent above that substance, or whether it be NO and uh, BA. Notice that the rate expression or the rate law only involves the reactants, too. These guys right here, the products over here, they're never in the rate law or never in the rate equation. What is the order of H2? H2 has a 1 up above it, even though you can't see it, so it is first order. And what is the overall order of this particular reaction? The overall order would be the sum, then, of this exponent plus this exponent, and so this would be called a third order reaction. Overall order is just add the exponents up. So would the reaction rate increase more if we doubled NO? or if we doubled H2? Hmm, think about that just a second. If this concentration to start with were 2, and this concentration were 2, if we doubled each of these to, say, 4 and 4, which one would affect the reaction rate the most? Well, those of you that are kind of mathematically minded are jumping up and down right now because you're saying, hey, this one's squared. So if you square this and square this, obviously this one's going to affect it a lot more because you're squaring a larger number or squaring this number versus this one just remaining the same. So doubling NO would obviously affect the reaction rate a lot more because its concentration would be squared and that would have a larger effect on the rate. All right, we have a series of videos coming up here where we're going to look deeply at these rate laws or rate expressions. We're going to look at how to find them. We're going to look at experimental data to determine them. And we're going to go in great detail with lots of example problems. So get your calculators ready. Here we go.